Well, Courtney and Anjani, thank you so much for speaking with the Nocturnal today. I think that you can, you can see just from the beginning scenes of this series that really grips you and it's extremely unique. Courtney, I mean, you've had such a wide ranging career from American Crime Story to most recently Uncorked. What made you sign on to this role? Arielle Hickson, wow. <laughs> I signed on to this role. You were 13 when I, anyway, I signed on to this <laughs> role because of Misha Green and The Underground. I was a huge fan. And then the opportunity to, to be with uh, Jonathan Majors and Journey Smollett and Anjanu. I, I just, it just, it was a, it was a dream come true. Um, and, uh, uh, and, and the idea that, that, that when I found out that uh, I was going to be taken out in the second episode, I said, oh, okay, but you know, these are monsters, so I'm, I'm coming back, right? <laughs> so I'm coming back, right? Right, right? Um, so that was, my, uh, that was my, uh, I was very excited just to be uh, in the room where it happened. So I'm very excited. That's fantastic. And Anjanu, I mean, I don't think we've ever seen a series like this that has a fantasy element with people of color as the stars. What impact do you think this will have across the rest of the country once it comes out? Girl, I don't know because it's it's a strange, you know, it's a strange beast. You know what I mean? It's like a strange beast, but I love that. I love strange. I love strange. So I'm, I, I think, you know, that you know, I'm just I can't wait to see what Black Twitter says. Black I Twitter. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait either, especially for nerds and, and fantasy enthusiasts like right. myself. Can't exactly. Help it. Exactly. Yeah. And then the thing about it is that we don't see the African Americans, black folks, diasporic folks, you know, portrayed a lot of times in sci-fi in this way that we are, it's our experience that's centered. We're not, you know, the appendages, you know what I'm saying? So I, I, I think that's dope. I think it's exciting. And when you kill off one person, you kill off all the black people in the film. Yeah. So hey, when I'm killed go. off, there's still more black people in the film. It's all good. Come on. Come on. That's right. It continues. And I think that one of the main themes as well, that's kind of the backdrop of all of this is the 50s, segregation, civil rights, everything that's happening around it. And Courtney, through your character, through Uncle George, I think you're gonna become America's favorite uncle other than my own favorite, but you know, we're not gonna go there. <laughs> How do you think that this gives us a glimpse of segregation in a time where we have this elephant in the room of the George Floyd protest? I mean, how do you think it's going to impact um, young people today? I think it's, it's all, all of it, Ariel, is just an opportunity for us to, uh, as we continually say, is an opportunity for us to, to learn and to, if, it, if we do nothing else, we drive people to Google and to, to all these search engines to find out about uh, the, the Tulsa massacre uh, in 1921, of, to find out about all these things, Montgomery bus boycott and, and things that we don't, we don't know about that, that are hinted at in, in our piece. Um, so for, for black folks and for white folks and, and Asian folks and folks, all folks who want to find out about the history that's been withheld from them. It's a wonderful opportunity um, for something this large to take, to step into that, that Game of Thrones footprint potentially to, uh, to impact and on that kind of a mass scale. I heard Game of Thrones footprint. I think this has Game of Thrones legs times 10. I think it's gonna have a cult following, if any. And um, Anjanu, going off that thought process regarding just the backdrop, of segregation and civil rights. I know you personally have been dealing with trying to get rid of the Confederate flag in Mississippi. I mean, when you were reading this script, what went through your mind? What went through my mind was that, you know, this was, this was, you know, as I said, this was, this was strange. This was, this was innovative. This was bold. And, um, you know, I, and, and, you know, I've been lucky for the last three or four years, five years actually, to play roles where I feel like, you know, this is what, it, it's the reflection of what I do when I'm not acting, you know, because when I'm not acting, I'm doing the work that you, that you, that you were referencing. So I feel like a direct connection between uh, my life, my real life and my work life. It's a convergence of my paycheck and my purpose. So I, 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 I am so grateful that I could be a part of something like this.
that I, it feels because a lot of times and Courtney will speak to this a lot of times you sometimes you feel like you are leaving yourself at home it's just so wonderful to to uh, have gone through what we've gone through in our careers to have a convergence as, as you said purpose and paycheck happen um so that you know in the midst of of the purpose and the paycheck i can be inter <coughs> interviewed by um by my niece and uh, what what country does <coughs> Does that happen in? But but here, you know, for all that we for all that we're struggling with in this country, you still have the ability um, to uh, to to bring yourself where you you to your 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 dream and your your purpose uh, can 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 converge here, um, and the fact that people now are talking about something like. It's taken, unfortunately, it's taken a life in order for us to begin to realize, wow, you know, that's not right. You know, it's, it's been not right for 400 and a half years. But if it takes, you know, for some things take quite a while for people to actually uh, see that, uh, that uh, lives, black lives are lives. And we're not, because uh, we are initially uh, from a tax standpoint uh, equated with dogs and hogs. Um, uh, um, and back in the, when we when the country first started, so that's that's the context from which we start. We're dog. We're worth the same on the same par as a dog and a hog, and maybe a horse. Um, so we're three fifths of a person. So that lets you know our constitution, which is an ingenious document, is being not, not taking nothing away from the constitution or or or, or, or George Washington or. Thomas Jefferson, but we look at them for for real, for real. They were slave owners. They all were back there. So um, don't try to sugarcoat for you so that you feel better. Some things are just going to, you're going to have to feel, be uncomfortable. And it's okay until you, as a genetic code, so you got to talk about our differences until our differences don't make a difference. We're different. Um, but uh, we were brought, we came here, y'all came, they came here, we were brought here. So, I mean, just that, that's different. And based on that, we have different viewpoints of the world. I think with what you're saying, Courtney, especially with this series, that really rips the band off in terms of talking about race relations in the U.S. and just where we are, especially right now, it can't be darkly more perfect uh, just for us to really just experience it and understand what's happening with your character um, with George Freeman he you know he's gone through his own issues but he really is a family man um, do you have any personal experiences that helped you develop your character uh, I am a family man for sure for sure um, so <laughs> it wasn't very hard for me to uh, connect with him and uh, um, our families our two families are are, are very close as I, as I hinted to our uh, we're actually heading to the vineyard uh, soon to uh, to you know spend some family time with your family, uh, and uh, it, it's it's just you know it, it, the, the, that is the the, the I, I always liken it to you know the fugitive is one of my favorite movies and uh, um, um, Harrison Ford's character you know you don't mess with the man's family um, uh, you know you go uh, uh, awaken the sleeping giant or uh, any of the Taken movies, don't mess with my daughter. You know, I have some <laughs> very specific skills. Uh, uh, the, 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 so this is, this is you know, uh, you, you messed with our family. You, I, you, you killed me, but you awoken the sleeping giant, which is my wife. My wife comes back into this thing, comes into this thing uh, and just takes, you know, becomes this huge. So it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's, it's uh, it's about family. It's a this seeing a, a black family. If 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 the world can see the uh, black in the day, the Huxtables and white folks can can put themselves into that that environment. See, that's what we have to have done for our whole uh, lives here in the in the states. Uh, we put because there was no folks of color on the screen. We had to oh Meryl Streep, but Sophie's Choice. Oh, that's so hard. You know, and so that's what we've done. The Godfather, with there ain't no black people in The Godfather, but we, you'd ask people, what's their favorite movie? It's The Godfather. So, you know, that the, 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 the folks, the, 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 there's no difference. If, if we can make the, uh, if, if white folks can go and make Black Panther an international sensation, 
um, you know, that lets you know that it's just tell a good story. Stop talking about it's a black film. It's why just tell a good story. And this is a good story. And Anjani, what about you for your character? You're the, you're the strong mom up in there, you know, <laughs> just trying to make sure everything works, especially after, well, I don't know if I can talk about this, but, um, you know, after episode two, you have to hold everything together. Um, what about you with your own personal background, as well as other characters you've played? How is that tied into who your character is? Well, with, you know, with, with, with Hippolyta, you know, Hippolyta is, is, you know, George and Hippolyta are the stabilizing forces, not just of their family, but, you know, they're the pillars of their community, you know, and they are, you know, that our office is not just a, the green, you know, it's not just a travel book, you know. Uh, uh, being taken care of in there. Yeah. It's like, a green book, right? It's a green book. Yes, the green book. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And it, it's like it's like the um, you know the, the post office. They 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 fix shoes up in there. Like mm -hmm. you know, it's the heartbeat. It's the heartbeat of that neighborhood. You know, and so Hippolyta, you know, by extension, is the heartbeat of that. Is the heartbeat of that neighborhood. So what's gonna what's interesting is watching her having to either choose to continue in this role mm -hmm. or do something else. And um, I, I love the idea that you were going to see, you know, her making making a choice that um, is a little unexpected, that not is a little unexpected, that is, that is unexpected. Um, so, yeah, yeah. I think that's all I said. Man, I, I, got, I got to episode five and I'm, I'm like craving the next couple of ones. Um, so what I love about this show though, is that there's so many twists and turns. You, you truly cannot predict it from the monsters to wizards to racism. You don't know what's gonna happen. For both of you, I'll start with Anjanu. What is your favorite element about this show? Your uncle is tired of hearing me saying this, but uh, <laughs> uh, I think this is, this is essential to know this, you know, that, that you know, H.P. Lovecraft was a, was a was a rabid racist. Like this man was a rabid racist. And so, what we have done, and what Misha did, and what Matt Ruff did, uh, is they took his name and essentially defiled it, and made this you know virulent racist name associated this virulent racist name with a narrative that is about black self liberation. Mm -hmm. You know, and from jump, that's my favorite thing. That is my favorite thing. That 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 in all of these genres, right? Sci-fi, horror, black folks get marginalized. Like they literally get erased. Like like, you know, five minutes within something, we yeah. dead. You know what I mean? We dead. Mm -hmm. So Lovecraft, what Lovecraft does is it turns all of that stuff on its head. It reinvents these genres left and right in, in, in every episode and 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 that that I dig that. I dig that. That's awesome. What about you, Courtney? Of okay. course. What's your favorite element about this show? I mean it there because it, it's just so unpredictable. I you know, I, I almost have too many things I love about it, but what do you love about the show? Uh, you know, I, I think that that would have to be it, that it's that you can't really you know, I've had a, a, just a terrible time trying to figure out how to explain what the show is about. Exactly. Uh, yep. Because it is about so many different <laughs> things. And yet it is very specifically about a family. So uh, yeah. I, I love that, 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 that for years, we've been centuries, we've been telling folks that we're very complicated and complex people. When people, uh, you know, white folks have tried to characterize us as inferior and and less than, and, and that our stories don't really matter. And here it is, uh, as uh, Anjanu uh, so adroitly continues to, to let us know about uh, uh, Lovecraft uh, uh, himself, uh, an avowed racist, and how uh, uh, Matt Ruff and, and Misha spun that on, on, his, on his head. And now we're, we're talking about the complexity of that is black life and that it matters. Um, and that that I think is is the, the the enduring legacy I think of of the once once we get into the the eighth and the ninth season and uh, uh, that we'll be able to look back on on our time together and and all the the different areas that we I mean it it, 
it's how exciting is that the potential to be able to explore black lives over uh over you know multiple seasons uh, that that is you know uh, the the last time that happened uh, i i can't i can't remember um so i that we're on the cusp of something uh very great and i'm i'm excited to be uh, a part of it and to be uh in the company of the ingenues and the jonathan majors and and the journeys and the misha's and and uh, uh, um, the Allison Hickson's. I'm very excited. Hey, what can you do? Well, I think that this is an incredible series. Thank you so much, both of you, for speaking to the Nocturnal today. I am hoping for season two, three, four, five. This is going to be a cult classic. I love it. This is a huge Black Lives Matter project, uh, both subconsciously and you know in your face. Thank you so much, Courtney and Anjanu. Thank you, Mike. Great Jimmy. interview. Great interview. I'm telling Jimmy. you tomorrow, I ain't your daddy. Okay, make sure you text them. <laughs> Bye, guys. Thank you so much. Have a good one.